All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. So I hope you're doing well, having a good week in your trading, wherever, whatever stage in your trading journey you're at, whether you're, uh, you know, actively trading the markets or just uh, getting into trading, doing some back testing and looking to refine your edge in the market. So I just want to go through a couple of trades this week, one that I caught uh, yesterday and one the day before. Uh, something that I was looking at this morning as well, didn't manage to get involved in, right? But... I just want to go, I just want to run through the analysis with you, how I manage the trades and really, you know, just to extend from the videos that I've been putting out, looking at Wyckoff accumulation, distribution setups, uh, looking for manipulation of certain levels, runs of that liquidity, looking for the order blocks that come from them runs and then mitigation from them order blocks that then lead us to uh, get involved with some entries and some trades. So, so basically I'm just going to run through what we're looking at first and then we're going to be looking at some charts just to give a bit of background uh, to the people that, who haven't seen any of my previous videos right so as we know right the, the market goes through cycles okay and these cycles you know we go through markdown phases which i'm sure we've all seen these trending phases in the markets right where the market's moving down we'll then go through an area of consolidation okay and then we'll generally start to trend up. After a trend, we'll get some sort of uh, distribution or some more consolidation, right? And then we'll start to see a push down, right? So basically we call these marked down phases, right? Or downtrends, okay? These ranging uh, markets are, you know, they're ranging markets or we call this uh, distribution when it's at the top of the range, okay? And there's a reason for that and we'll get into that later on. So these phases where the market's moving upwards are your trending markets and upward trends or uh, bullish trends, markup phases, right? And this is an area of accumulation. So in addition to this, just while I'm editing this video, right? Let's say that we get a move down, okay? And then we see a pullback. Generally on a lower time frame, right? If we was to look on a lower time frame, that move would actually look like this, right? So we'd have a small area of accumulation on a lower time frame, right? So we're not necessarily just going from markdown, okay, to accumulation, uh, to accumulation, to markup, to distribution, to markdown. To, like we're not necessarily doing that, right? We can be trending, okay, but the moves on a smaller time frame can look like this, right? So we could be trending down, okay have an area of accumulation on a lower time frame, right? A pullback, an area of distribution, right? And then continue with the trends, okay? Small area of accumulation, right? Distribution, okay? We're not necessarily just gonna be going from one to the other, one to the other, one to the other, one to the other, look like perfect. So obviously from, from this, right, we can see that these moves here, okay? are the the longest moves right the biggest moves they sort of span the furthest distance right and obviously in forex or any type of trading right we want to you know the further the market moves in theory the bigger uh, you know the more we can make right so ideally we want to be trying to capture these moves okay so looking to get in around here okay and then ride this trend up Okay, so how do we get involved here? So if you don't already know, which I'm sure a lot of you do, right, there's large players, large institutions like big banks, hedge funds that are trading the financial markets alongside us as retail traders, right? And obviously, as you can appreciate, they have massive amounts of capital to be able to move this market. So the Forex market is absolutely massive in terms of trading volume, right, compared to the stock market, right? So in the Forex market, there's about $5.4 trillion that get exchanged every single day. So 5.4 5 trillion compared to about 200 billion, 200 billion, right, in the in the stock market. So the liquidity in this market is huge, right? It's absolutely massive. And obviously, as you can appreciate, us as retail traders do not have the, the buying power to be moving this market, right? It comes from large players, 
the significant moves come from large players, okay? So why does that matter, right? So basically, if institutions, big banks wanted to, let's say they want to uh, sell the market at this point, right? If they was to just sell their positions all at once, right? They'd just move, they'd just move the market, and they'd be getting filled in lots of different positions, right? If the if there wasn't much liquidity, okay. So if there wasn't much liquidity at all of these price points, okay, they would literally just move the market until they got filled, right? So if this doesn't make much sense to you, check out after this video, check out the video that I did on liquidity where I explained this concept a little bit uh, in a lot more depth and it should make sense, right? If it doesn't, just drop me a comment and I'll, I'll do another video, right? So basically, what the institutions do to get around this is they buy to sell and sell to buy, right? So basically what that means is let's say there's a level of structure like this, right, where there's equal highs. Most people are going to be shorting this market, right, anticipating lower prices, okay. It was, you know, most people are taught to sort of sell at resistance, right, buy at support, okay. So there's a lot of people that are short in this market with stop losses above this level, okay. And there's a lot of people that are also anticipating a break of this level and anticipating higher prices. There's also people that have got buy orders above here or buy stops buy limits right above here looking to take this market long so ultimately around this level there's a load of buy orders right loads of buy orders okay absolutely millions and millions and millions of buy orders all the way through there okay now the big banks institutions they know this right they know that there's going to be loads of people with stop losses above this level so obviously if they want to take the market lower they want to sell off some of their currency right they're going to need they need to buy in to this liquidity okay so this is the liquidity they're going to need to buy into this liquidity right from around here buy into the liquidity to then sell through all these buy orders right so obviously if we want to sell we need someone on the opposite side of our order who's willing to buy and if we want to buy we need someone on the opposite side of our order who is willing to sell so basically what happens is they'll buy it again they'll buy into the liquidity sell off right and then generally what you'll see happens is the price will then they'll start taking profits okay so we'll get some profit taking and again, just quickly, whilst I'm editing this video, right, let's say that we had our move like that, we come down and we get this profit taken, right? This profit taken on a, might just look like this, okay? So let me just uh, undo that. It might just look like this, right? So we get our order block through there, and it might just look like a V bottom, right? But on a lower time frame, if you was to zoom down into this, then you would most likely get some sort of um, accumulation at that level, right? So again, going back to the video that I put out on uh, Wyckoff market structure, market structure and the fractal nature of the financial markets. Right, market will then revert back up to this level, right, where we saw the buying pressure continue, and then we'll see another little rally, whether or not it's a full bone reversal, or um, you know, or just some relief off of this off of this level. Now this here, right, this buy to sell model is what we call our order block. And the reason we call it an order block is because obviously it's where the institutions start their orders, right? They start buying into the liquidity to then sell heavily. And the reason that we get this uh, move back up to this level is so they can mitigate, which basically means to reduce the risk of their buy positions right because they buy into this position here and then they'll sell off massively right and obviously as the market's moving down they're in profit they're in profit from their sales from their sell positions right that they've sort of started through here but now obviously they're negative on these buys so when they start taking profits and the market starts to revert back up right they'll then mitigate out of these negative buys and that will give us another chance to enter okay so effectively, that's sort of what we're going to be looking at, right? We're going to be looking at the mitigation of order blocks. And basically, this type of move down here, the accumulation and distribution inside 
of these order blocks, right? So when you get an order block like this and then you see this type of move form inside of an order block, it's a very powerful uh, entry technique into, uh, into the trade, right? So I hope that makes sense. If it doesn't, just stick around because I'm going to be showing you the examples on the chart and hopefully it should make a lot more sense once we see it uh, on the charts, right? So there's just a couple of trades that I want to run through with you from um, today and yesterday that I was able to catch uh, the day before, sorry. So basically what I want to bring your attention to is this area here, right? So as you can see, in fact, if we just pull, let's pull this back, right? Just so you can see it. All right, so again, as you can see, right, we've got this zone here where there's going to be people buying all the way through here, right? So we're going to have stop losses all the way through here, okay, from people that are buying this up, right, looking to take this market higher, okay, there's going to be stop losses all the way through there. So if institutions want to accumulate long positions and they want to take the market higher, obviously they need people that are willing to sell through their stop losses in order to buy. Okay, so what we what we like to see here is a run through this liquidity and then a push higher, right? Giving us our order block. So if we bring on the volume as well, this should be become more clear as well. So we start to see a nice push through there, nice spike in volume as we run through this liquidity. Okay, so if I just move some of this crap out of the way, right? You can see that we start to spike in volume through here. Okay, so if you look down here, we start to spike in volume as we run this liquidity. And as we move through into all these orders, right, we start to accumulate a position, right? So we, we start to see the banks accumulate. their long positions, OK, and they do this through a theory that a man called Richard Wyckoff um, first identified right so this is the this move here right and i'll put a figure up on the screen just so you can see is the is an accumulation schematic that richard wyckoff first came up with okay and basically what happens here is big institutions and big banks basically manipulate retail traders retail investors into short positions while they look well their intent is to take the market higher so as we break through this level we start to sweep the liquidity from people buying and now obviously we're going to get a lot of people short in the market because we've just broke major resistance right or major support so people are going to be shorting the market shorting the market which is great for the banks and institutions because they can just keep accumulating their buy positions accumulating their buy positions and then look to take the market higher okay down to the one minute you, you can see the um, accumulation take place i'm not going to get into too much detail about uh, on this because i didn't actually manage to get involved here however if you take a look right when we come well, and then obviously we see a nice strong push off, okay, leaving imbalance, leaving a big area of imbalance through there, okay, which we expect price to want to come back down to fill, okay, for efficiency. And then what we want to do is we want to look at this area here, which is now our order block, right? And we want to, or I personally want to look at this and see if I can see any reason that price might want to uh give us higher prices in the future, right? So this is now a strong area of demand, okay, in the market. So if price returns back to this level, I'll be looking for reasons to take this market higher, right, through this order block, okay? So again, the imbalance right through there. Start to move through that imbalance, okay, as we come to the bottom of it, respect it very nicely, okay, on the market open. Right, so as we approach the order block, what I want to do is I want to just drop down to the lower time frame just to see how price is reacting here and show you exactly how I got involved in this trade. Right, so if we just take the volume off for a second, obviously we can see that we've got there's a few levels we want to pay attention to inside of here. Okay, so we've got this higher time frame order block, right, and we've also got some a secondary order block through here. 
Right, we've got a secondary order block through here, which we've actually seen some mitigation on, so we wouldn't necessarily expect... I mean, this could come back down for a retest. Of course it could, right? But the one that I was more looking at is this area through here, right, where we push up, break these highs, see some almost like some distribution, okay? We then see a push up past this level, Right, again, give us an, giving us a, a smaller order block through there. We then push down, giving us another order block through here, which I was interested in looking at, which happens to just be 50% or around 50% of this larger order block. Right, and then as you can see, we come back up to here, mitigate off of that, and then see some higher prices, right? So as price came down into this area, this is this was my point of interest, right? This was like my refined kill zone. This is the area that I was really sort of, if I see any type of manipulation on this level, bang, I'm in, right? Obviously, anywhere in this zone is good, okay, if I can get the right entry, but especially around here, I'd be more aggressive on this area, right? Now we've got our zones marked out or our points of interest marked out, we just want to see how price behaves and try and get the best entry. Obviously, an ideal scenario is to look for the same entry again. Okay, so basically looking for price to come down, right? See some sign of weakness, okay? Some sort of selling climax, an automatic rally, right? Some liquidity being generated, a sweep of that liquidity, giving us uh, another lower time frame order block. Okay, a break of structure, tap back into that order block, or not, ne not necessarily a break of structure if we had a break of structure there, tap back into that order block looking for higher prices. Okay, so obviously our stops below the order block, depending on how price reacts here, right? It depends on how we then, you know, manage our entries, right? Okay. Right, so as you can see, we push down into this level, right? I've had some liquidity being generated here. If we just bring on the volume, right? See a nice push up off of that level. So that may be enough for you to enter here. To be honest, I didn't actually manage to get entered there, right? I actually entered off of this second test, right? So when we broke above, so basically we made these equal lows, right? Sort of ran that put in this descending type of movement, right? Broke above these highs, okay? Came back down and actually got involved in this lower time frame order block, right? So stops below this order block. And I was looking to target this area up on the higher time frame. Let me just zoom out. I'll show you why I was targeting it, right? So let's remove that. Come back out to the hourly and I'll show you the price action here, right? So as you can see, okay, we had a similar sort of phenomenon here, right? Or a similar sort of setup here where we had a breakthrough, okay, into this, uh, into this liquidity, right? So resting orders above these equal highs, a push up through, and then we saw some mitigation off of that level, right? Tap into that order block and then some more equal highs being generated. From that, we saw quite a nice push up, came back up, tapped into some order block through there, or saw some reaction off of there, which left some imbalance here as well, right? So at minimum, I was gonna target this imbalance, right? But as we've seen this nice manipulation here of these lows, okay, a nice strong push up, we've taken the liquidity from this top side, right? And we've generated some more equal highs. This was the, you know, there's gonna be the most liquidity laying here, right? The most orders laying here. Right, so let's drop back down, see how this played out. So, see a nice tap back into that order block. Right, in fact, we probably, so we, as, as you can see, we respected this level really nicely, okay? Let's just delete some of this so we can just have a look. So yeah, as you can see, a lot of respect at this level. Obviously, now, now that we're following this up, right, or we started to move up, Okay, we can actually start to, you know, you can look to get involved in some trending moves, whether or not you miss this. If you can just identify this setup, whether or not you got involved, you can look to get involved on the trend, worse way. Okay, so, you know, what I say, worse way, if you miss this type of setup or you're slow seeing this type of move, then, but you can identify it, then you can start getting involved on these trending moves. Okay, these 
this here, right, this uh, last point of support is generally a nice area to get into as well. Okay, so once we break above, we come back down for a retest, right, looking to get involved on this last point of support, okay? So I just want to show you how that ran. Let's just move out to the hourly because it doesn't reverse from here, right? And I'll show you how I got involved in the, in the next trade. So the way that I got involved in the next trade was very similar uh, to this. The principles are basically the same. The entry technique was just slightly different because of the way that price presented itself to me. And if you haven't seen the video that I did uh, on institutional order flow in Bitcoin, right? I'll link it. I'll put it on the screen now. Right, then go and check that video out as well because this, um, the way that I entered this next trade was how I was showing in that video, right? So basically, looking for our markup, okay, identifying our markup, right? We then see some distribution, okay, at the top of our markup. Higher highs on price action, okay, looking at our RSI, okay, getting lower highs on our RSI. Okay, so price diverging from the RSI. And then once we get that dropping down into this area on a lower time frame to then look for a tap into an order block, right? You know, getting some better entries and then anticipating them lower prices. Okay. Right, so let's just right <clears throat> slow this down. So again, hourly time frame, looking for our divergences on the hourly time frames, just get rid of this. Right, as you can see, nice area of imbalance created through there. We'll just see how price respects that later on. Right, and then bring on our RSI. As you can see, we're getting slight divergent we're getting divergences on, on our RSI. Right, but we haven't got a, we haven't had a rejection yet. Plus the fact this is the middle of the night, right? So as London opens, right? Bang, we get a nice rejection just as London opens, right? So as you can see, we got higher highs on price action, right? Lower highs on the RSI. Basically, we're generating liquidity through there, liquidity through there that gets ran. Okay, we then push up, take the liquidity from the higher side see a pull down through this liquidity, a pull back up into this order block to mitigate from them negative buys and then looking for lower prices, okay? So let's just drop down. Now we know what we're looking for, let's just drop down to our lower time frame, right? All right, so what have we got? Obviously taken out of this trade pretty pain free as you can see. So we, what do we notice, right? We notice that we have got a nice area of liquidity through there. Had a nice area of liquidity through there. They've got ran. Right. And just to bring it to your attention, right, on the lower time frame, got an order block through there that gets mitigated. Okay, and then we see a rejection from... We then see uh, an order block through there, right? That runs this liquidity. We then see a push up and a rejection and a reaction off of that. Okay, so you know this is fractal. Okay, it happens on many, many different time frames, right? <laughs> Giving us uh, an order block through there. I'd actually refine this as we push back down came back up and saw a strong push up through here, right? So I'd actually be looking at this area, okay? For a, you know, for a more refined entry, obviously we then got an order block through there, right, or through here, okay? But you know, you can, depending on how price reacts here, you can you can look here as well, right? Depending on how price reacts here, obviously we have had some uh, imbalance here, right? And we've got some liquidity being generated up above here. So if we see some manipulation of, just bear in mind, obviously these are not always gonna get mitigated straight away. If we see some manipulation of this level, a push up, then we 
excuse me, then we could uh, get involved in this lower area, in this, uh, you know, in this lower where the buying pressure really started. Okay, so this basically this higher time frame order block. If we was to move out to let's say I don't know, 15 minute, right? This would be a 15 minute order block. Okay. So let's just. Oh, what happened there then? I'm just blowing the computer up. Right, let's. Right, so let's just have a look what happened, right? You sort of get the point. Okay, so let's just delete that, delete that, delete that, delete that. Okay. So as you can see, right, we'll delete that, we'll delete that. We get some liquidity being generated through here, right? A run up through this liquidity, okay? Again, more liquidity being generated here. A run up through that liquidity, a tap into this order block, right? Lower prices, okay? So a rejection off of that order block understanding that you know if this happened up here that would be great but with the understanding that this there's been liquidity being generated all the way through here we're at a higher time frame order block we've then run it saw a strong rejection okay you know we could we would expect to potentially get stopped out here right and then you know look for mitigation of this higher order block and then lower prices, right? So, you know, these aren't going to hold every single time. You're not going to not get stopped out every single time. Luckily, we sort of managed to get involved here and didn't um, didn't get stopped out. So the way that I managed this one was out to the hourly, right? Looking at this rejection candle. Looking at a two to one on that, right? At the bottom of this imbalance. Dropping back down. And then taking targets down there, right? So over the past couple of days, some really, really great trades taken. I believe that was a one, basically two one to tens caught through uh, the concept of institutional order flow, looking at Wyckoff accumulation, distribution, uh, setups, looking for liquidity runs, order blocks on them, liquidity runs, and then mitigation from them order blocks. So I just wanted to um, want to get this video out to you. I hope you got value from this video. If you did, be sure to hit the like button, hit the subscribe button for similar content. And wherever you are on your trading journey, I hope you have a good week, and I'll see you on the next one.